Well, I mean, uh, we'll take one more question. Hello and welcome to the show. Your question. Hi. It sounds to me that facilities management applies only to large organizations. Can small and medium enterprises benefit from FM or can they I'm sorry, could you please repeat your question? We're having difficulty with the sound. Okay. It sounds to me that facilities management applies only to large organizations. Okay. Can small and medium enterprises benefit from FM or can they not afford the fees? All right. Thank you very thank much you. for your question. Uh, she's asking, can smaller or medium-sized businesses benefit from facilities management or is this something that only really caters to larger corporations? No, it, it, the benefit can be from uh, every organization. Th there are so many simple things that can be done um, to improve the environment, to minimize the costs, um, to raise the standards. And one of the things that we, are, we will be doing is we will be trying to communicate to people that are interested. And if anybody wants to contact us through your program, we'd be very, very happy to try and point people in the right direction. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Well, in any case, ladies and gentlemen, we'll now take another quick break. A break for us, but not a break for you. Business World continues with the different views and different perspectives on investment in Egypt. We'll be back after that. Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You tuned into Business World. 257-94828 is the number that you should be dialing. And we have another caller on the line. Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome. I, I believe that uh, facility management is great for companies. However, the culture needs to be changed. So my question to your guest, how he intend to give his message around, apart from contacting the businesses? Yeah, what do you mean, the, the culture from the side of uh, potential clients? Yeah, yeah, the culture of running companies, the business. Okay, so okay, so great, thank you very all much. The, all the site management, no, sorry, there is a point to add, is uh, facility management includes outsourcing as well. Okay, thank you for thank your you. question. Uh, of course, first, does the culture need to be changed in the way business are run in this part of the region? And is the second part of the question is outsourcing part of facilities management. Okay, I, I think, yes, the culture does need to change. Um, business managers, chief executives, financial directors need to become more aware. I think when they become more aware, then that will be the change of the culture. The culture really needs to change top down. Yeah. Um, and part of what we're trying to do here in Egypt is develop that awareness. Um, is facilities management uh, part of outsourcing? The answer to that is yes, but it doesn't need to be. Um, in our years in delivering facilities management in the UK, we have advised as many organisations not to outsource as we have to outsource. Okay. That decision really should be made in terms of what the, the needs are of the or the client organisation, absolutely. Yeah. For some organisations it's the right thing to do, for some organisations it's not. Okay. I mean, we talked about uh, standards, universal standards, be it on an international level or be it on a national level or even regional level. Uh, as is the case in the EU. Now, do you think that th the absence of Arab standards for operation and maintenance and, and items related to facilities management is, is a gap that needs to be filled, that perhaps uh, developing uh, an Arab uh, facilities management uh, organization or association would be very beneficial for the region? Absolutely. That, of course, at this point may be a bit early to talk about it, but Nonetheless, it might be you know what's needed. Well, I don't think it is too early to talk about it. Um, it might take some time to develop and mature. Um, but at the end of the day, if Egypt and, and I, you know, in the in the short couple of years I spent in Egypt, I see a country with so much potential. And if it wants to realise that potential, it has to be inclusive. And to do that and encourage people from outside of Egypt to come, they need. Egypt, I believe, needs to start adopting some of the standards that are recognized internationally. Um, so uh, I, I know that a lot of hard work is being done by the government in terms of tourism and developing industry in Egypt. And I think the sooner that they uh, uh, acknowledge and take on board some of these standards, then that will, as that will assist, that will help. Yes. I mean, is there also a link between facilities management and government? Or does FM just cater to the private sector, okay, and also cater to the governmental sector. Absolutely. Uh, and, and if, if there are perhaps some, you know, Yeah, and one of the biggest uh, developments in facilities management that took place in the UK was when they introduced the public-private partnership, 
which where government uh, partners with uh, the private sector to yeah. develop hospitals, schools, whatever, and that is happening right now in Egypt. Um, they may go and invest today in Egypt with the private sector for the design and construction, but unless they also acknowledge and start to recognise they need to adopt good best practice for the operation, then all of that investment that they pay up front uh, gets lost if, uh, if buildings and facilities and services are not properly maintained. Yeah. And that would, that the, the PPP that occurred in the UK is what elevated facilities management in the awareness of government. And now you do not get a government contract in most countries in Europe without facilities management being a core part of the, the delivery. Okay. So given, given what we've talked about, it would seem that facilities management would not necessarily suffer in times of a global financial crisis. Would you agree with that? Because, because you know, needs change, uh, of needs of organizations change given the climate. So you just cater depending on the needs of an organization. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be correct? Yeah, we, we don't, it actually, facilities management will thrive during this recession. Okay. Uh, the last two recessions that have occurred elsewhere, you know, around the world, facilities management has thrived. And the reason is, suddenly the boardroom is interested in that overhead. Suddenly the boardroom is interested in some of the subtle savings and improvements that can be made that are not always to the fore in, yes. in their core business. So facilities management actually offers uh, tangible benefits during something like a, an economic recession. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that. Of course, facilities management, a new and exciting field. And we've had a lot of calls today, which shows there's definitely a lot of curiosity on the field itself. I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Stan Mitchell, chairman and president of one of the longest established facilities management businesses in the world. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this edition of Business World. Hope that you enjoyed our discussion on facilities management. Might have been confusing at times, but of course, we do hope that we were able to clarify things more than anything else. That's all from me. I'm Yusuf Gameleddin. Of course, do remember that you can drop us an email with any inquiries or suggestions about the show at businessworld at yusufgameleddin.com. Much more coming up throughout the evening here on Nile TV International, including Nile Cruise and then Panorama News at midnight Cairo local time. That's all. Thank you for watching.